Well, it's changed quite a lot. I think the, uh, the political interference with the university is much less today than it was when I was here. When I was here, Frank Irwin was in his prime, and he was pretty well running the thing and running it badly. Frank Irwin would have made a superb dictator. It's, it's a matter of delegation. It's a policy. It's a policy-making organization, not a day-to-day -day management organization. Well, I think University of Texas would have flourished. I'm, I'm, it's arrogant on my part to say that. And I would never have permitted the breakup of the College of Arts and Sciences because the sciences and the humanities belong together in a unity. And there's nothing wrong with the fact that the arts and sciences would be the largest college within the university. Uh, if you want to split them up, well, you've got Texas A&M and you've got institutions all over the world that have divided the humanities and the social sciences from the sciences. And that seems to me an intellectual mistake. Well, I think, I think that's very hard to do. And one thing that stands in your way is the U.S. News and World Report. Uh, those, those evaluations they make are so bogus, so dishonest, so fundamentally fraudulent uh, that you, you fight against an impossible situation. They have criteria that are totally unrelated to the quality of the institution. And they don't, they don't ask, well, what's the quality of the students that you admit? No, they just ask what percentage of the students who apply are admitted. And that's just, that's just dishonest. It doesn't tell you anything. And then they ask about reputation. Well, who the hell knows about the reputation? They, they, they call deans and college presidents and ask them, who do you think is best in this field or that field? I proposed to file suit against the U.S. News and World Report and then, and then cross-examine all those people who are supposed to be witnesses. Professor so-and-so or President, President so-and-so, uh, I understand you evaluated uh, Boston University, you evaluated Trinity, you evaluated this school, you evaluated that school. Who teaches at those schools? And it would be the damnedest expose of ignorance that you could imagine. These people evaluating schools that they really don't know. Political correctness is, is, a, is a real threat to the university. The difference between ideology and the search for truth is, is profound. And there are too many ideologues in the university that are not searching for truth, but just riding their hobby horse and selecting evidence to support it. Good example of that is, is, is uh, Howard Zinn with his People's History of the United States, one of the most incompetent and, and uh, inaccurate histories of this country that's ever been written. I think, I think they, they pose the threat of fraudulence right and left. And, and I think one of, the, one of the most important features of an educational program is the interaction between the, the, the professor and the student. And that's absence from, the, from those programs for the most part. Uh, I, I, I'm very wary about it. Just like I'm not one of these people that goes nuts over electronic books. Well, I think it's almost impossible, uh, and, and you see that word research is a very funny word because uh, there are people who search, who discover new knowledge, and there are people who research and they, they look at the work of the searchers and, and bring it into the classroom. Well, you can't be a teacher and not do research, but you could be a great teacher and, and not be an original scholar who had come up with new knowledge that nobody knew before. Now let's go to the question, is it important to have researchers but not searchers? I don't think so. I think that you've got to have both. But I do think that, that many uh, colleges and universities have been damaged by insisting that everybody has to be a searcher and everybody has to publish because a lot of what they publish is just not worth it. It's not worth anything.